crap. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're so, going to collect one uh, on the last dive, but we are ahead. quite far yeah. bit away from the last yes. site. Um, and we've been seeing these hemichoraliums. Yes. We've been seeing these. The, the yeah. red ones. So we, we would like to collect uh, one of the red fans, not the whole colony, a part of it. And uh, the reason being that uh, they can be very diff sometimes it can be very difficult to identify the hemichoraliums from the paragorgids. So the bubblegum corals from the hemi uh, coralliums. So uh, we had collected something that was ID'd as a hemichoralium in the last dive, but about uh, there is some confusion about the ID of these pink fans. And since we have been seeing them so often on this dive, and uh, it is hemichoralium is again an understudied group, and there is consensus in the chat as well. Um, that it is a good candidate for collection, so we sh shall probably go ahead and collect okay. a piece. Okay, so yeah, we've seen a number of them. Yes. There's a there's a good reason to collect it. We're taking a portion. Yes. And it would help us understand this place. Yes. We're good with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Taylor and we're good with this? Yeah, you we can get some good zooms and take photos. A... So uh, one thing... Right. We'll uh, probably just grab it and stick it in the box. That... Uh, while grabbing it, while big breaking a piece of it, so the scientists want to have a look at how it breaks. So apparently that is one of the ways to differentiate between the two groups of corals. Okay. So uh, there's lots of them, so if this is not a good spot, we can move ahead and collect any Somewhere one else. of them. Yes, because oh, we nice. have been seeing them more or less consistently from the we start have. of our show. We have. Yeah, as we look for them, this is putting us in a better position to move forward, so for the back row. And for those listening at home, we can't just tell the ship to go forward without having the ROVs in position. Yeah, thank you for explaining that, Mia. You're welcome. Could you explain what position is best for the ROVs to be in when you want the ship to move? Well, we want you to be not tail to tail <laughs> and, um, you know, not too far apart, but heading in the right direction so you're not going to get pulled away by the ship. And also when Dan says it's good, <laughs> <laughs> still learning, Maybe learning a lot from Dan. Basically, we want uh, some tether in the bank. Yeah, tether in the bank. That's the term. Oh, I like the tether, in the, tether in the bank. But you have ROV nav on your computer over there, right? I so do. That's what I was look looking for. So now that I'm getting to understand how things go, before just asking Dan, like, hmm, can we go now? I'm getting a better feel of which directions are good. We want to be pointing the same way as the ship yeah. and um, kind yeah. of just right off the stern almost. Yeah. Awesome. But as we've been exploring this area, we've been getting in a better position, nice. which I'm sure Dan was doing intentionally. Oh, of course. Huh. So just to clarify, it sounds like you want the two RVs to be facing the same direction as the ship? And yeah. you want to avoid any possible like entanglement. Yes. Yes. Entanglements are bad. Wraps are bad. Tether management, as it was. Trying to get a spot where we can see uh, see the break. Okay. Uh, you want to go in tight there on that one. That should work. Is that going to work for you, Science? Yes. Taylor Ann, do you know um, what spots are taken in the sample tray so Dan can know uh, where exactly you can put this? Yeah, good point. Yeah, um, so we could put it in uh, starboard box D. 
Everybody that is completely Z. empty. Or D as in dog. D as in doggies. That's appropriate. That's fitting. <laughs> D as in demo sponge. Yeah. Oh. D as in dentist. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to put it in the front box? I forget if these guys are floaty or sinky. Um, these How about this yeah, these should be sinkable. Yeah. Okay. They shouldn't yeah. float should away. Be too float. Put it one of the little boxes on the starboard side then. Yeah, starboard side would be good. Because we just Ready need a small 10 Let me know when you want it out. centimeter section of at least the the branching so we can see um, yeah, how the branches extend for morphology purposes. Just going to play with the uh, grip force here. And Jake's got it all recalibrated, so. We can pick up an egg without cracking it. Oh, you can? Yeah. Wow. Yes, we can. But he means Jake, he doesn't mean me. He means Jacob Bonnie, the other uh, Hercules uh, navigator but, or pilot. But, How have uh, you guys been telling, are you Jake? Master, Master Jake as master we refer Jake. to him. <laughs> <laughs> Young Jake and Master Jake. Yep. Recently he got his uh, master's degree. And, mm, he's been with us uh, for a while now. He's yeah, I definitely recognized his face. I. I told this story before, but when I came on for the mapping transit cruise, uh, 152, 152? Yeah, uh, from British Columbia down to Hawaii, Dan was on the cruise earlier and we were all helping to bring in provisions. We made this big assembly line for our, the people coming in and the people going off board and I heard his voice and I was like, what's your name? And yeah, it's, just, it's interesting to meet people after hearing their voices from watching all these streams for so long. He's Master Jake and I'm the young Padawan. Is that enough there, Sans? Is that enough? That? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm muted. Yes. Yep. You're, you're clear. Low motion. You don't want the ophiroid. What's that? Is the ophiroid also? That's okay if it comes along as an associate. Along? Yes. Yeah. Was that a good? Did you guys get a good look at how it broke off there? Yeah. Yeah. So this this would this confirms that it's a hemicorallium. That's very brittle. Yes. So, from what I'm learning from the chat from Asako that. Uh, if the colony bre breaks like how it did right now, uh, then it is a hemicorallium. If it was a bubblegum coral or Spongy. a paragorgia, it wouldn't be this brittle. No. That was a... This is why I love these chats. We learn so much and such yeah. minor details from various people so, uh, who are specialists in, in these groups. So it. So this would be a hemicorallium, given yeah. how it. The. Uh, the piece that's broken on there is held on by the, those guys are holding on with their arms. Yeah. And it just fractured. Or I bumped it, one or the other. Uh, do we want both the pieces or can we just get one of the pieces because it's a big. Uh, um, I mean, I think we've already detached it from yeah. the bottom. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not a lot I can do here. We might as well honor it. <laughs> take okay. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to just break it off and leave it there. Okay, you can uh, go ahead.
Sample uh, trio. Uh, can you hit sample salvo for me? I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. The purple button over there says sample. This is a new one for us. Most of the other watches do this, but this uh, changes the uh, pictures all over the ship as well, so they can see the sample going in the box, and also lets the, the back row can see a little bit better what we're doing here. I typically don't do this, because then I have to rejig my other, like the DSC and stuff. But. Uh, what box were we? D is in dog. D is in dog, yes. That should be the, the end one, oh. correct? The small one on the end? Yes. Uh, the one that is most aft. Inboard aft. I wanted to be able to see a little bit better because I got this guy hanging off here. Yeah. should fall in place. The jaw should go in there without yeah. not gonna happen. I'm gonna have to go the other way. Otherwise we'll wind up with it in two boxes. Maybe I can go this way. that box all the way out? The box is all the way out. All right, we're going to have to do it this way. Beautiful. So... Monkey with its fist in the jar at the moment. <laughs> okay. Nice. Great. Good job. Awesome. And that is sample number 032. 032? Yes. And we're at depth? 1316.9 meters. 1317. So for those listening at home, Taylor Ann's the data logger, so she she logs this in. Sample tray in. And right. then I also will drop a waypoint on our map and log it as well. Come on. That's uh, what we call freeze fail there. So Mia, do you have a pretty like um, a map for each dive where that that shows like the locations of every sample then? Beautiful. Um, yeah. So we they're called uh, targets. Um, I'm not. Sh I th I think we start a new file every dive. I'm not. I'm not sure. That's a question for any. But um, yeah, we definitely we mark. So when I wait until the item is in the box or the jar or whatever. Uh, and then I'll mark it down, and then we have that location. Um, Check out your eggs before they're hatched. Exactly, and <laughs> the 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 software's a little finicky, and it's hard to delete something. In there if you want. So uh, we might delete it from the the picture view, but it's the file still exists. So mm -hmm. that's why I wait until it's gotcha in the box. It's the blob. This is really interesting. Yeah, this looks like probably. Uh, there was a dead sponge on which the coral... Can I like hear you back there? Yeah, an encrusting sponge and on, along the side of it or on top of it, the primnoid colony settled. Pashana, are you, are you on? Oh, sorry, sorry. 
again making the same mistakes yes so this looks like an encrusting sponge to us on top of which a primnoid uh, colony has grown or along or its sides and it also has an ophiroid associated with it so this was an interesting observation definitely thank you okay yep salmon eggs benedict <laughs> Alrighty. So we're, we've slowly gotten a little closer to waypoint seven. Let me see how far away we are. 150 meters away. And just addressing a comment in the chat. Um, yes, we are streaming on our page, nautiluslive.org, and we also stream on YouTube, but if you do want to leave uh, any questions, that portal is only available on our website. Uh, the live chat feature is not available on YouTube. Um, so if you do have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them on our page, and we'll try up, to get to uh, them when we can. Uh, um, we do try to prioritize to make sure ROV operations are stable and science um, is getting uh, the samples it needs and IDs it needs, but we will try to get to your question as soon as possible. Do you guys remember what time this dive is over? Uh, eight, ten. Eight. Eight. Oh. eight. Eight or ten? Eight. Yeah. Perfect. We're covering at eight, yeah. Not five. Okay, so we continue to see the hemichorallium uh, sea fans, and there's another one of those uh, actinoscypha flytrap anemones, smaller than the one that we spent some time looking at. Yes. And two anthemasters hanging on to that big boulder. Probably a shrimp swimming on that side above the an enemy and there okay, has been good a for 25. lot of Roger. change in the community composition we are still seeing the similar diversity as we are slowly moving up slope So we now we get into uh, there's some more information in the chat about the primnoid that we were looking at a little earlier. So a probable ID for it is uh, Caligorgia Gilberti. I am probably butchering the pronunciation here. Let's see. This looks different. Right. Yeah, the pink coral mm -hmm. on the yeah. back there. Yeah, that is probably a Can uh, come down a couple meters now? Coming down. Not down five, no. Mm -hmm. Stretched out. Uh, there's a yellow. Yeah, I see it. Is it possible to have a quick zoom on it? Absolutely. Great. Go ahead, Janet, and zoom in there. Uh, can be a plexorid, uh, a canthogorgia, or zoanthids overgrowing something. So th those are zoanthids overgrowing. Probably Ooh, a dead Another little, another tiny uh, species. Little close till I get landed. Okay, could pull out just, yeah, there you go. And I mean, we can, I we landed, can continue you can uh, moving. Uh, you got what you need, Jay? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Those are zoanthids. And zoanthids, again, are part of the Nidarian family, yes. right? Can go yes, things. but uh, zoanthids are uh, hexacorals. Hexacorals. So, again, that means they have six tentacles or uh, multiples of six. Multiples of six, yes.
Would you say hexacorals are more common in the deep sea than octocorals? No? We have about 15 meters left. Uh, I wouldn't say so. Uh, depending on the habitat and depending on the region, some places have higher diversity of octocorals and some places have a higher density of hexacorals. Uh, no, okay. well, what it, uh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Sorry. Depends on what we see. Yep. If she wants to zoom in. And Jaina, while we have a little break here, I was wondering if I could ask you what kind of um, films you work on, because I remember that from our previous watch, you said when you're not here on the Nautilus, you work on um, creating films, right? Um, yeah. Um, I wish I could say I have as many great degrees as all of you sitting around me, but um, I went to film school. Um, I have an undergrad degree in film and environmental studies. Um, yeah, now I just work full time um, in Seattle at a production company called Run Studios. Um, we do a lot of corporate stuff there with like Microsoft and all that. Um, but when I'm not doing that, yeah, I'm working on passion projects on the side, filming documentaries. Um, I think that the camera can be one of the greatest tools for change and advocacy. Um, can show people things that they can't. <coughs> see what they're in their backyard like we're doing now you know <laughs> <laughs> for sure you can't uh, just step out into your backyard and see some uh, basket stars yeah. on bubblegum coral um, <laughs> and so my goal is i love storytelling and i would love to be a vessel for people to tell their stories and for people to hear more stories yeah mm, that's awesome. so beautiful um, i know in guam we had the Guam International Film Festival, and that was yeah. such a pleasure to watch all these um, kind of small, smaller indie left. filmmakers show their work um, at the local museum. It was really, really interesting. Yeah, um, I recently did a film festival, oh, wow. and there was around 85 teams, and come up five. Um, I came in the top four directors, and I was the only oh female God. on stage. Oh, so congratulations! It felt very empowering, um, wow. especially in a field where it is very male dominated. Um, yeah, and to be PLC and a woman in a field that is normally male dominated feels very wow. great. And I hope that I can make some change with my film. Yeah. Right yeah, and here you were introducing yourself saying you didn't have big <laughs> degrees or anything. Meanwhile, you're winning international film festivals. <laughs> yeah. well, can we have a zoom here? And yeah. also on the yellow fan at the back. So I think, uh, yes, yeah, so we are looking at a solitary cup coral. Uh, at the base, close to the base of uh, the hemichorallium. And there's a beautiful yellow colony, which looks like a pixarid from a distance, uh, close to the mm. uh, flytrap anemone. So if possible, we would love to have a close up of that as well. Yeah, I'm trying to get the ROV down in there, but it's not uh, cooperating, so. Okay, okay. And I have to, uh, to long distance. And this ship's about steady. Mm. Come on, I find a home. When Dan's working on that, yeah, Jaina, I, our watch, we have so much diversity here. Okay, Jaina, you can zoom in there. Um, Pause it's it. It's been great to work with so many different people from many different backgrounds. Yeah, it's very um, motivating just to be around so many people who love what they do. Um, spark something in me. And if any of you ever have a story to tell, please that let looks me know. That looks like... Aww. Yeah, I'd love so to Jesse, get a chance to see your films when we get off watch. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh yes, I would love to have a look at your films as well. 
I'll is send them in that group chat. <laughs> yes, please do. Um, okay. Gotta come to Hilo and collaborate with the Megalab. <laughs> Would you see that's a Corelli We're all about yeah. storytelling. I like, uh, because of the white bulbs at the end of the tentacles. Uh, the horn material is the, in there, is the flight trap. Or is it a cup core? I think it's a <coughs> Coralimorpharia, probably. Uh, we can move on to the yellow fan, sure. if okay. possible, we while on. we still try and get a final. Decimal phylum. Yeah, that's a, that, that was a cup coral. I think decimal phylum is not. Yes, decimal phylum is still a valid name. Something is. I'm just yeah. looking at the deck cam. I'm liking the feel of this ocean. Could mm. yeah. bode well. It's calm. It's Don't drink the sounds. I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> okay, push on that. Push on. A little shrimpy. Look at the species. That was on. The same one, yes. So. Is this in the same class as the pink one we just collected? Uh, no. So this is a paramercia. So it is in a different. It is an octocoral again. Sorry, uh, but in a different family of octocorals. So it is a paramour seed. Is that another flight trap anemone from yes. the side? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great still shot. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Lovely. Things are heating up again, so I have to turn everything back to full blast. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can continue moving. Okay, we can go wide. Uh, don't turn them down so far next time, Jana. There is happy medium in there where you don't have to blast them. Me, can I hear you? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I heard it there. <laughs> can leave the, what are the A and the B fans set at? So the instrument racks have been right at 80 the whole time, and this fan has been fairly stable. But the back ones are, it's fan A that's getting warm if you look at the, at the graph here. So... So I don't know what the setting for that one is on the back wall. So you can go back there and turn that one up a little bit. And then the one for van B is uh, right up there. You can turn those up a little and turn these down and that will cool the room without uh, blasting those front ones there. I would say the back ones are, must be people turn them down because they're noisy. As we continue to move up slope, uh, we have uh, less than an hour left on our watch, if I'm not wrong. So hopefully we will continue to see, continue to have great observations for the remainder of our uh, watch. Yes, hopefully. There's another... Harmatid uh, flytrap anemone? Mm, left or right? Where do you want to go around the rock? Uh -huh. 
You're asking us? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> left. <laughs> right. Up. Fork in the road. <laughs> I'm just a taxi driver. Left seemed to have more corals, uh, more organisms in general, so I chose yeah. left. And also sometimes I can be direction dyslexic, so... <laughs> Well, usually the yeah. choice is pretty obvious there. Was like <laughs> play trap, coral. Yeah, play so I'm constantly, before saying left and right, I have to check myself and see that I'm doing it correctly. I have to check. Like you have to do the thumb trick? No, I, <laughs> before even knowing that there's a thumb trick, I have developed, like, I write in air to see, like, with, because I write with my uh, right hand. You're not alone. Yeah, so I'm like, okay. It's actually a very common thing with people that yeah. are dyslexic. I'm also dyslexic. I uh, I haven't been diagnosed with dyslexia otherwise, Come up but when for it me. comes to left I'm and right, play. I am a mess. <laughs> uh, so very confidently, I give people directions, and I just tell people, don't go by what I'm saying, go <laughs> by my hand. Like I point in the right Ooh, star. directions. But Bob Ballard is actually uh, dyslexic. He talked about it. Okay. Yeah, he had a nice video a couple years ago. Yeah. Oh. He has a whole that's interview that's nice. online. Yeah. It made me feel better about myself. Of the Solaster and Caesars. Like in my mind, I don't like. I know which direction I'm going. The name doesn't matter to me. But when I say it aloud, I tend to mess it up 90% of the time, unless I'm <laughs> yeah. checking with myself. Cute little Caesar. Just goes to show uh, this. Me a star. For me, it's east west. I do the always same thing, Pasha, except when I'm getting directions in the car. <laughs> so it's yeah, even I worse. always tell people that go by, follow my hand. <laughs> that that points to the correct direction. For me, it's being in the real world and telling somebody, oh, starboard. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, what? Like, I'm fine with east-west, actually. I'm fine with starboard is not, is that not right? Right. right. Or it's the same letters, the, right. the same yeah. amount of letters is left. Ah, good so. trick. That's a good trick. Yeah. Starboard and port, right? Yes. Port is left. Then is left. It? Port is left. Port is left. Starboard is right. Yes. Starboard is the side the steering board was on. Yes. Ah. Starboard. And port is oh, the it. side that they put okay. the dock yeah. on. Yeah. The lading <laughs> port. Correct. Where you Ooh. load the cargo. Ah, see. Steering board. And is there also a term for like the side that the wind is coming from? The like leeward? Side or something like that? Uh, leeward is the no wind and no windward. Wind. Windward, yeah. windward, yeah. windward, windward is the wind. Windward and leeward. Windward and leeward. Up hills and leeward. So the windward side will tend to get more, more humid, salt. more rain, and leeward oh, is a lot drier. drier. So deserts are found on the leeward side of mountains. Oh. Do, you, do you guys know another, kind of another seven like a Yeah, it's probably it's an the asterisk. Family, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was the correct scientific name? Uh, <laughs> Solasterid uh, family, that's what Solasterid. Uh, I need as previously. Uh, but we can always have these images and send it to Krishma for confirmation. I want to listen to Windward Skies. A person, but he's busy with the Okeanos dives, which are happening. So, uh, oh, okay. we have, no, a, we have no, Isaac. Like two feet? Sorry? Are these are those little projections the tube feet, the little suction cups on that yes, sea star? We can see the I saw I can ask Malia she knows how to play when it's sky. It's a good song. Uh, so I saw this post the other day, I think it was a tweet where somebody was like, I can't believe some humans know left and right, like up and down and half the comments were like what are you talking about? Like, that's so stupid. But then I thought about it. I was like, oh, you're right. I can't even do left and right. Like, I can do left and right. It seems intuitive, but for a lot of people, it's not. Which is okay. Which is fine. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're not smart or intelligent. Yeah, I mean, each of our brains work differently. And it doesn't matter. We are functional and right. So. Yeah. So, uh... From the chat, the ID for the sea star is uh, Astenactus species, so which would be in the family Mixasteridae. Astenactus. It almost Astenactus. sounds like asterisk. <laughs> it does sound like asterisk, okay. <laughs>
Are these pillow lava formations, do you guys know? Without Val being in the room? Yeah, I mean, the little that I know about geology, I don't know anything, but from listening to people, <laughs> Is that rocks. this is <laughs> these rocks, but <laughs> this is what they generally term as pillow lava. I P can identify pillar? that pillow. Much. Pillow. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty consistent good all the way for, up. Uh, Twenty-five. Roger. Right, and and it has that texture, the um, grape. What was the word again, Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, batrioidal. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun word. Yeah, if you look at the Tasmoda F, um, so when you walk in the door, that's van A, where the studio is. Uh, van B is the middle one where the scientists are, and we're in van C. So a lot of times the studio will turn that one down back there because if they're doing an interaction or whatever, it's noisy. And it's also... It's also... Uh, where the door is, so. Right. But um, you can see the green line below where the water is cycling. So that's the inlet uh, cooling water temperature for the air handlers. And uh, that's the one you want to keep an eye on because if that thing is uh, older than dirt and it, well, it's not that old, but it. Uh, has had some issues. So when it's not uh, cycling often, uh, like it is now, those are a couple long cycles. Uh, it's yeah. possible that it's struggling. Can we zoom there? Yes. That and, uh, great yeah, right. Oh, what's that uh, next to sea the cucumber? Yeah. I see it. Turning up the next air will actually firework. make it warmer because you're Yeah, it's basically works like a, a radiator. Okay, you can zoom in on that one. Yeah, cool water comes through the air handler and then the fan, you know, blows the air across. And is that an uh, organism on top of the Yeah, coral? that would be another chirostylid uh, spot lobster. Yes. This little arm's extended. Waving us down. <laughs> I would say that this sea cucumber is in a different family from the one that we saw earlier. Are we able to center the sea cucumber? Sure. Um, she's probably full zoom there. Oh, uh, maybe not. It's probably it can be the same. Can be still a cyan. Is that a sea Sina? cucumber? That is a sea cucumber. Cyan elected. Mm. See some little projections coming off the top, mm -hmm. like little tiny tough tentacle-like structures around yeah. the mouth. So yeah, this is probably still a sign elected. Uh, I was initially going with the uh, elastoporidae, but look more similar to some of the sign elected uh, sea cucumbers. And we would definitely. We have nine meters left. Sign elected, yes. Right, right. Uh, from the chat also there's confirmation. Thank you so much. Can you ask the bridge to uh, go check on the chiller? Seems like it's, uh, yeah, they'll know what you're talking about. Okay, can go wide. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's missed a couple beats there, so it's right. Uh, one of them might have gone offline. There's there's two of them in there that um, that keep the water cool. So I want actually glycol. call. Yeah, three meters left. Right. Yeah, And for any viewers who are also wondering about pillow lava, uh, here's a little expert from a NOAA website. Pillow lavas are bulbous, spherical, or tubular lobes of lava. They form during eruptions with relatively low effusion rates, and the slow extrusion gives uh, enough right time it. It works. 
for a thick crust to form on all sides. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, geology is really fascinating. I need to start oh. studying some more. Uh, the one across from the ROV shop. Have any recommendations? If you hear me. <laughs> Yeah, it would be great to have a geologist on our watch, um, but luckily we are on a crew with them, so usually we just talk to them later about it mm -hmm. and uh, ask them questions. And I also just enjoy talking to them while we're watching the stream if we're off watch, and they always have a lot of really interesting things to say about the, the geological features okay. that we're seeing. Yeah, for another 2-5. center of the screen now we are uh, looking at again another column another paramersid octocoral right which would be the yellow fan uh, with ophiroids on it uh, and next to it is a chrysogorgia uh, and uh, we have the hemichorallium in the background you and like this delta or you want me to come down a bit Dal is chiming um, in, in the chat yeah that come down are five. indeed pillow vessels that we are seeing I'm enjoying how much I'm learning from interacting with everybody. Did you want to zoom on the guys on the rock? Uh, we had zoomed on it earlier, so if we want to move along, we can. Okay. Can you push your microphone closer to your mouth? Me? Not you, sorry. Uh, Upasha. Oh, okay. Sorry, I keep moving it uh, to sip onto my tea and then... Yeah, you're just very quiet. Yeah. I keep looking at the time up above the screen and looking at my watch and I'm like, what? And I forget I set my watch nine minutes behind regular time. It messes me up. Yeah, and the screen above us, uh, the clock above us is UTC time. UTC, yeah. yes. And right now, what's very confusing for me is that I haven't changed the time on all the devices. So my laptop phone is in local time, which is the Hawaiian standard time. My watch is in central time. That is UTC. <laughs> and not like always in my mind, I have a calculation of time back home in India. So it's like a weird calculation that's constantly happening oh, in my brain. Yeah. yeah. So I'm changing uh, HST to uh, central, then from there to, <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. and I don't need to, but I. Yeah, with our ship to shores too being from Yeah, anywhere. exactly. <laughs> we have Hawaii time, Guam time, EST time. Yes. <laughs> so I think next week there's going to be, I'm trying to set up a ship to shore with uh, the undergrad uh, biology society in my oh, university, they yeah. reached out. I had, I had asked my advisor to ask them if they want to do it. So yes. they emailed me that today. That would be awesome. Yeah, so they have a meeting probably next th Tuesday so we can arrange Great, something. Yeah. yeah. That would be exciting. That's cool. Uh, I have a ship to share with also my alma mater where I, I went to school, university. the college I uh, went right. to. That's yeah, great. with their environmental science program. Yeah. So going to be really fun to talk to them. Yes, I, I wish I could set up one with my uh, undergrad college and my master's university back in India, but uh, right now that's... Oh, there's still a few more weeks. Yeah, we can, <laughs> yeah. Time. or we can do it another time. <laughs> and for anyone listening who's um, not sure what we're talking about with Ship to Shore, that's our other program where we call into classrooms or other community okay. groups live. Um, basically, uh, with our satellite um, presence, we're able to connect with you over Zoom or Google Meets and share a little bit about what we're doing here, what we've been finding, yeah, two meters um, left. share about right, the share. science, Come up five. and of course, answer any questions. Um, it's really great when we have a lot of kids 
with all sorts of questions about living on the ship or marine life or yeah. <laughs> um, the ROV technology. the biggest shark you ever saw. So <laughs> you're able to sign up for those anytime. We you are 24 hour operation. Yeah. So just go ahead to nautiluslive.org and um, you can find the form for ship to shores there. And it doesn't have to be a classroom, right? I know that um, I also have one scheduled with my organization. My coworkers will mm -hmm. all be, we have an all staff meeting every month. So I'll be doing a ship to shore with them. And uh, it's like, I'm still there for the all staff <laughs> meeting uh, basically. Push in there, Jaina. I did a ship to shore earlier this morning with um, University of Hawaii at Hilo's intro to Oceanography okay, Lab. Okay, that's good. Thanks. You can go away. Today, and that was, that was really fun. That was really cool. Did you think that was yeah, a shark fun. egg sack or something? I, I think we are seeing, uh, again, those limpid, uh, like, gastropods. And there's a crinoid balancing itself on the rocks over there, trying to learn gymnastics. <laughs> yes, and... Uh, if we see one of those limpid... Um, the ship's just about ready to... Like stop. gastropods, we can have a look at them again because we have more people in the chat right now and they can help us ID them. Oh, there's a, a bamboo coral stalk in the background and, and also a, sea a sea cucumber hanging. I see there. that. I was wondering. And also... Oh, no. Do you want to zoom on the sea cucumber? Uh, definitely, we can have a look at the sea cucumber before definitely. having gotcha. a look at the bamboo coral, unless it's a dead stock. Okay, I'm zoom on the yeah. pink blob there. Yeah, this is another cyanolactid sea cucumber. Uh, so far, all the sea cucumbers that we have seen have been from the same family, cyanolactidae. Is this a cup coral next to this other <laughs> tiny little? Oh, uh, no, that's the white one? Yeah, right that below it. The white, solid, white-looking structure seems like an ophiroid. The squishy structure in front of it, I'm not sure, can be, uh, I don't know, encrusting, not sponge. I'm not sure what that is. OK. Great, thank you. It looks like it's resting on its back and having a nice afternoon siesta. Yeah. <laughs> Just chilling. Yeah. Do you think those long protrusions from its body are mostly for sensing? Like Sensory food? organs, most yeah. probably. Uh, okay, so... Oh, uh, this keeps getting longer. Whoa. <laughs> it's tall. To see the uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is not dead. I can definitely oh. see oh, that the... Uh, you can see polish. the size on the Atlantican. It's pretty oh, that's I see huge. it up there, yeah. yeah. Is it as tall as her? And we would love to have a close up on the polyps. That is tall. I did not expect it to be this tall. That is a It looks like it can almost reach us out of the ocean. Do you think the bottom part was fed upon, or is that just how the base No, it's the base. There you go. There's something. I mean, honestly, I haven't seen, I don't remember seeing this tall of a bamboo whip. Maybe I've seen it. But uh, for a smaller colony, like you have a certain portion at the bottom which doesn't have the polyps. Uh, so that's why I thought, oh, it's probably dead. It doesn't have any polyps because like for a good amount of height, it didn't have any. But then you see that, no, it's this skyscraper of a bamboo coral. Mm -hmm. So sorry, it was a little hard to hear you. You said this one is probably dead because it doesn't have branching out projections? Is no, that no, what no, you're it's saying? not dead. It's, not it's dead. alive, okay. Yeah, it's alive. Okay. So Did when I mean? saw the lower part of the colony, I didn't realize that it was the stall of a whip. Yeah. So I thought that it was a dead bamboo stalk. Oh, but okay. then as we panned gotcha. up, we gradually start wow. seeing the start seeing a bit the there, uh, This one must be so old, right? To grow yeah, this tall. Absolutely. Thanks. This has been the biggest coral we've seen in around. The tallest one, definitely. Uh, can we have a good zoom on the polyps? And I saw a chirostyle and squat lobster actually um, making its way making up. Making its yeah. way up. <laughs> sea spider? Where's the sea spider? Where was, was the sea spider on the bamboo coral? There's a sea spider? Uh, I think Osako spotted one, so, I'm, uh, so we are confirming with them where they... We can hold zoom and look at the structure of the polyps. So this is... 
So, uh, the bamboo corals were previously in the family Isididae, but now they have been classified and moved uh, to the Keratoisididae family. Uh, and there has been a lot of revisions, uh, and there are still some undergoing revisions with this group, but this is probably a Lepidisis. I'm not sure. Definitely a bamboo coral. Uh, there was, after we have a look at the polyps, if we gradually start fanning down, there was an organism on the oh, I bamboo see it in the coral. Other cam. Yeah, you can see it on the porch cam. Oh, yeah, yeah. Th I thought, I was thinking that that's a squat lobster, but we can have a closer look and see and confirm whether it's a squat lobster or a sea spider. It looks, it looks rounder for a sea spider from a distance, but... Yeah, the way it legs kind of look yeah. from here, it looks like a spider, but yeah, I can't tell. I'm not sure. This is tall. Can we, do we have an approximate idea about the height of this? Probably three meters. About three meters. Three meters. Three meters. That is taller oh. than Herc. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's tall. It's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably several thousand years older than you two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if there were used to be more around, maybe? Maybe. I mean, we didn't see any we others. We didn't see any, or we didn't even see any dead bases. I wish Dr. Franz was on the chat. He would have loved seeing this very tall bamboo coral and would have loved to chime in on it. So it is a bamboo coral? Yes, it is a bamboo coral. Although we don't see the... We I mean, I'm mistaken, it's the bamboo coral had the black the black and white alternate pattern. So we can see it at the base of the... Uh, okay. uh, oh, I see. I think I see. There's yeah, you can spider. see it yeah, through yeah. this. Yeah. It's, this a is a, it's a squat lobster. Yes, They're a lot farther apart than yes. other ones we've yes. seen. Yes. Yeah. So the white is calcium carbonate and the black is protein. So it's protein. So they have a protein core surrounded by calcium carbonate. Oh. And at the nodes, which are the darker bands, the calcium carbonate is not covering the protein. Ah, oh, interesting. I think I'm stating it correctly. Uh, so it's not like a calcium carbonate and then a deposition of uh, protein and then uh, another round of calcium carbonate. It's not like that. Right. There's a protein core, which is covered by... Uh, it's like temporary break. Temporary yes, areas where yes, it's yes, not covered. Yes, yes. I wonder if that helps it kind of give it structure, but structure also flexibility. Flexibility, exactly. Yeah. And I think that is what allows it, allows these whips to be this big. Right, or some of that's even amazing. if they are not whip-like structures, they uh, the they can be very tall fans, and they are not so densely branched always right. as uh, some of the others that we have been seeing. Wow. I think the protein nodes allow it to be flexible in the water uh -huh. column and uh, move along with the water so that they don't break under the pressure. Wow, that is so cool. That's like best of both worlds because I've always learned yeah. about stony corals with the calcium carbonate and soft corals with like protein-based yeah. skeleton. So this is really mixing both. That's awesome. A lot of doctor corals have calcium carbonate. Really? Yeah, awesome. yeah. calcium carbonate is found in, I think, most of the doctor corals. Well, there you can see a yes, the there it's very yeah, obvious. The polyps are not there, so you can clearly see the black and white oh, alternation. Oh, yeah, so that's the bamboo and there's reference. The yes. It, it's got so a small cool. hold fast. It's not even that it has a very big hold fast at the base. That was a beautiful observation. Yeah, it's so that tall so for cool. such a, a small base. Okay, so the white is not just calcium carbonate. It's, it, ha it is magnesium and calcium carbonate. Oh, also magnesium. Yes. Uh, Asako added that in the chat. Yeah, you can get some perspective from the Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. Uh, can we hold for a minute? Uh, if it if it it should have very long. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, sit down here and do a little housekeeping. Okay, great. Have no needles here that should be visible. Mm -hmm.
I just got a text from my grandma who's watching, mm -hmm. and she said that um, she's mad that I didn't tell her about any of the films I was just talking about. She was like, why do I have to watch this to know about all the films that you made? <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. a valid question. <laughs> Scoldings from YouTube. Sounds like you can have like a family film night when you get back. <laughs> Make some popcorn. And just wanted to also shout out, you got a comment saying your camera operation <laughs> is really good for our, for Jane, our video engineer and for our ROV team. I think that pesky scoop got in the way of a still cam. Uh, the, one so. the laundry up there. Oh, the mesh bag. Dan's taking in the laundry. Thank you. Oh, that's the still cam on the left, the, the yep. cylinder. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. I might have to uh, put this thing in a box. Well, it looks like there's manganese all over the place, but it's all welded down. I mean, if we happen to see a little patch of scoopable manganese pebbles, we could we could use it, but That's this place idea. looks solid. We'll probably find some as soon as we put this away. Uh, <laughs> do we want to collect a sample of... Okay, okay, so we have enough sample core samples, so we can... From our side, we can move on whenever you guys are ready. Oh, we were just confirming with the uh, other scientists, not sure whether this is a candidate for a collection or not. We're lucky it'll stay there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we're going to disturb that big one. Yeah. I think it's it's clipping the top part as much as they will grow. Definitely, if we have enough samples, then never. Yeah, I don't think we have any bamboos on our ID or our target ID list, do we? I think the list doesn't go, uh, it doesn't list much of the octopoles at all. No, no, it doesn't. It's mostly like uh, sponges and uh, sea stars. Mm -hmm. So Hans, I know you said there's some uh, candidates for manganese. Can you just remind us, um, is it by color, shape, uh, texture, that we're able to tell that? Open the iris just a bit for us. Thanks. I think it's the texture, and I think it's, you know, where they form, and it, it looks like there's manganese on a lot of this stuff here. But we'd only be sure by scooping a little bit of it. I'll scoop it so I can put that thing away. It's a good, oh, so uh, we're, we're going to scoop one right here? It's as uh, good, as, good a candidate as any. Val will tell us those aren't manganese nodules. <laughs> yeah. They could Val's be manganese nodules. Yeah, lounge you in line. <laughs> Dr. Not, Val? They're not round enough. Not round enough. I'll yeah. bet, yeah. Yes, Val's here. One second. Could be... Highly doubtful. Who knows? I don't think we've made Val happy yet with manganese scoops. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, these look very. Really but we'll ask her about this. What's the question? Yeah, you know, would this have any potential for manganese in these small scoopable pebbles? And if not, we'll move on. Uh, these don't look like manganese nodules to me. I mean, everything's manganese coated around here, but these look like uh, mostly pillow basalt fragments. Okay. So yeah, not a nodule field, unfortunately. Well, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Lowen. There's a tiny cucumber, something right there. Mm. But okay. The pro uh, probably are the masters, the red. And there's a sea cucumber. I see the cuke. Yep. Oh, little matches the other one we saw. Okay, we're good for 25 meters. Roger, please. yeah, we're 80 meters from. You want me to come down a little bit? Mm. No, you're good.
just to clarify for any intro to chemistry students here, uh, manganese is a different element from magnesium. So those are two different um, elements on the periodic table. And a little fun fact, manganese is actually a trace mineral that is present in our bodies in very small amounts that helps us um, form connective tissues, uh, keep our bones healthy, um, support blood clotting. So um, manganese is something that you can find not only in the deep ocean, but also in yourself. I get my manganese at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Daily vitamins. Definitely a tastier way to eat, get your manganese than manganese I nodules. I wonder where Costco <laughs> gets we, it. Uh, Even though we describe them as potatoes a lot. Any of these colonies, if possible. Sure. Great, thank you. Hmm. Now you can come down. You can come down five. Coming down. Hmm. If I spin around here, it's uh, oh, oh, oh. It come right down, come down. Coming down. So as I spin, it's pulling you. Yeah. Uh, so it's pulling your head off. So Do you want me to ask the ship to hold position? No. Nope. No. Nah. I get him. Um, you get it now. Yep. Okay, Jenna. Roger, Roger. Soon mm, little C brittle star. Uh, we see two different kinds. We can't of hear you. Oh. Uh, yes, there are these two different kinds of opioids. One at the base, one at the coral, and. Uh, one in the background, these again um, look like the heavy corallium that we collected, so uh, we can continue moving if everybody else is okay with it. Roger. Hmm. Can you hear that? Sorry. Yeah, we can. Hmm. Sorry. You know, we had a discussion of port and starboard earlier. Yeah. Are you ready for the maritime word of the day? Yes. What is it? Ooh, yeah. Give it to us. You've heard the word posh? Posh? Posh. P-O-S-H? P-O-S-H. It is a fancy kind of... Does it mean fancy? Wealthy? Deadly? I think there's... What is it? Posh. What does it mean? If someone is posh... Yeah. It comes yeah, like from the days of the steamers when they opened the Suez Canal and the British were going down to India, hmm. which they happened to run, as you know. <laughs> yes, Jewel happened the, to take over. Jewel in the which crown, they of colonized. course. colonized, yes. And, um, <laughs> you know, in the hot sun, you don't want to be on the side of the steamer that's heating up. So okay. the real ticket that you wanted was port out, starboard home. Oh. oh. That's the expensive ticket. That's the fancy ticket. Port out, starboard home, so you oh. don't get hot. So you want to stay on the starboard side of the ship? Com coming back to England. Coming back starboard to England. Starboard side. Port going out? out to India. Starboard. Port side. Okay. Oh. Port oh out, starboard God. home. That's a really good trip. That fact. is, yes. I'm going to that write it down. Mind blowing. <laughs> I really like this. Can we some, keep this some up? Some call it trivia. <laughs> some call it a history career. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep That's an doing interesting a bit of maritime, trivia. maritime word of the day. Yeah, maritime right. word of the day. Meters I love left that. Ship Posh. <laughs> Posh. It's amazing to think how certain words have such stories associated with it. Yeah, for sure. It's a beautiful Anthomastus. Can I type in? Uh, oh. I 
Oh, there's something. What is that? Yeah. Let me get my stick well, out. Yeah, so on the top, that probably is a crinoid. Oh, that thing. Looks like black yeah. That looks like a toppled over. Right. Oh. Maybe not. No. That little sand patch is cool, though. And the ship's done moving, by the way. Right. And um, we had a question in the chat. Uh, since we've been seeing so many sea cucumbers, asking about how do sea cucumbers reproduce? And I believe sea cucumbers are often um, kind of what we call broadcast spawners. They release they eggs and sperm into the water. Well. The eggs are fertilized, and then they actually develop into larvae. Um, so uh, many mm -hmm. invertebrates in the ocean undergo metamorphosis, just like uh, you know caterpillars turn into butterflies and radically change oh, their body, um, their the way their body that is formed. Yeah, um, marine invertebrates trash. also do that as well. That and when like they are in this larval stage, they kind of float around often ah, for a little bit, on, and then go through certain metamorphosis stages until they become that blob that looks like a sea cucumber. Is that correct for the deep sea as well, Upashana? Uh, or do they have different strategies in the deep sea because it's so hold isolated? On, hold on. Yeah, this looks like trash, but I'm not oh, sure. I'll get back trash? to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, yes, that does look like trash what on a dead oh. black coral skeleton, uh, which has a bunch wow, of that's ophuroids. that's interesting observation. And yeah. So, uh, looks like hydrozoans a probably growing on it, but that blue thing looks definitely yeah. like a piece of trash. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like are we able bag? to collect it, or do we no. leave it? No, we leave it. Yeah. Collect a picture of it. Yeah. it looks like the tiny solemnus is jelly floating through. And we're at a depth of 1,313 meters, so 13, 13 meters. It's a bit depressing to see trash down here. Yeah. Human impacts going, reaching everywhere. Yeah. I was hoping it would be an octopus or something, the way it was kind of laying there. Interesting rock formation. Yeah. Kind of looks like a face there. <laughs> you yeah. See that? Yes. It's like cloud watching. Eyes, the yeah. a nose, a mouth. It's <laughs> kind Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's a sign. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of substrate for things to attach to in the future, I guess. Looks like there's a lime green something down there. You do a uh, quick zoom for us, sir. It. it was it was down. We already passed it. But oh, but there's a little something. Okay, hold that. Okay. Someone's running away. It can go yeah, right. looks like a small crab. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Are those mushroom corals? Yes. Cool. Yes. I'm learning coral ID. <laughs> <laughs> so fun.
And Cohn, good for another 25. Roger. That looks like another sea star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the red sponge. Does it have fewer legs? Mm -hmm. And I think we have approximately uh, 17 minutes left on our watch. Uh, or it could be like a bunch of ophiroids colonizing the red sponge. Um. Yeah, we're about 40 meters away from our waypoint. Do you think we'll make it? I think we might link it. We just, uh, I just asked the bridge to go another 25 meters. Okay. Then we are not getting up till we make it. Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> What'd you say? That we are going to squat in, squat in our seats and not <laughs> no. give to the next watch till we make it. We're going to have to come back for the, we're leaving for dinner anyway. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, can we uh, zoom in quick on those uh, shells? Sure the limpet like gastropods that we were looking Ooh. at because we have more people in the chat Go right ahead. now and they can help us ID them because we weren't <coughs> we were not very successful. Is that four zoom is it? Oh it's interesting how we've seen them in like twos. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So anybody in the chat room if you guys can chime in and help us with IDing these gastropods, that would be really helpful because uh, beyond gastropods, we were not able to make much progress with IDing these. Does that look like an appendage sticking out of the right the siphon. hand one? That is oh, a siphon. siphon. Okay. All right, the ship's so moving, we've uh, got we can, we can continue left. moving. We can continue moving. Yeah, we have moving. good pictures. Of it. Yeah, 17 meters. Right up. There's good footage of those. How long is the tether between you two? 30 13. meters. Oh, how long is that? We are again seeing a primnoid fan, probably uh, the Caligorgia. Another squishy something. Yes. Oh, that is, can we zoom in on this? This is a different sea fan. The one in front. This one? This one. Yeah, and there's also a little yellow something there. Yeah. Go Do ahead, turn it. Push it. And this is definitely a sea cucumber in the background. That is a primnoid. We have seven meters left. Uh, uh, but not meters. a Caligorgia. Probably the Calitrophora that... Calitrophora? Yeah, uh, we were seeing previously. Yeah, this does look... Do you see these tiny little yes. transparent? Yeah, they're also. probably mycid shrimps. Uh, there's an ophiroid on the fan and a uh, uh, squat lobster on the rock below. I feel like squat lobster is your second like themed animal. <laughs> and uh, I think we can move to the little yellow organism that was on the rock. More yeah. Oh, that's a, that's Ooh, a gastropod. Nice Okay, um, zoom back in there. We also might have a possible mollusk ID for these from Virginia. Falls in there. Uh, Probably doesn't the same quite no. look like this. Step in the family. Uh, yes, this this is another gastropod that we are looking at. Let's see. Uh, and yeah, I think we can move ahead and have a look at the sea cucumber that was in the background. There's okay. so many interesting Pushing and cool things cucumber to have a look at. Yeah. We have two minutes left. Wow. This is again, I would say, in the same family, Sinolactid. And we can see that it has already, how that it's a 
intestine and stomach is filled up with sediment. So, uh, so it is gradually moving over the rock surfaces and feeding on the bacterial mat and the little bit of sediment that is present on these rocks. Uh, that's so crazy, you can just see exactly yeah, where it's has digested. Sail. It's like it's it has the sail on the back of it. You, yeah. of, you see that? Sorry, what? The sail. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, it's really interesting to see these um, yeah. organisms fly around. Or, well, I guess not fly, swim. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, swim. <laughs> I was about to say, but they do fly. But <laughs> remember, it's so, but these cameras, they're so good that it. I sometimes forget that we are in water. It looks like they're in air. That's, that's a great uh, okay. observation. Okay, going, thanks. We're 40 meters away from the target. Yeah, the gastropod we just saw is probably uh, in the family Turidae. That's what I can make out from uh, the yeah, benthic animal guide. Mm, yeah, sure, it can come up first. And there's uh, probably a glass sponge there. Can we have a quick zoom if okay, possible? Push, push in on the sponge there. That. Okay, push in a bit more. I think it's the same. Oh, it Good has place. a couple of zoanthids overgrowing it. Uh, I think it's the same family that we saw earlier. The um, it's not on our list. I think we had checked it previously. Okay. I think there might have been another cucumber in the distance. The at the top. This one, the Uretidae. Okay. It's a Uretidae. It's another Chrysogorgia that we are passing, but we can continue moving. All right. So, Pashana, I remember you said um, when some organism has another organism growing on top of it, it could be a sign of maybe poor health. That sponge we just saw, it had, what did you say, zoanthids? Uh, zoanthids, yes. Is, do you, is that common? Is that normal? Do you think that's a sign that that sponge is not doing so well? Or uh, I've seen, I've, it's not very common to see zoanthids uh, circle there. overgrowing. Um, sponges but we do come across them so i would probably say that the sponge is not doing that great mm -hmm. uh yeah that would be my best guess mm -hmm. the situation interesting mm -hmm. we have a bright red shrimp probably an imantocarcinus shrimp swimming and floating through the middle that's quite a color yeah yes. <laughs> so striking yes. yeah of course Naturally, it would just be blackness in the black. Mm -hmm. Are you guys taking uh, soil core samples this cruise? Wherever it, it permits, if it's not a hard bottom. We have. Not on this watch, but... Is it possible, there. Hans, that a lot of these are actually bioluminescent, but we wouldn't be able to tell because our is lights are... There is a VIP in the center. Yeah. That's a good question. Can we have a look? Sure, the that biologist. <laughs> looks like a sea pen. I'm not sure. Let's zoom in, then I'm going to. Go ahead. Val says that this is probably a good place for nodules. Hello. Yeah, Kay. so I would say, okay, so this is in... Uh, this is a Baltasina. This is a kind of sea pen, which was previously called the Halipteris. So that is more commonly uh, known right now. 
a lot of people are more familiar with that name, but they have been reclassified into the genus Balcacina. That's a good observation. We can continue moving. All right. Yeah. To our audience, What's we that? are about we to change continue. watches okay, now. Um, so thank you so much for exploring with us on this ship. We are going to continue this dive for several more hours, so stay tuned. Um, and we'll pass it off to our next wonderful group of explorers, biologists. I'm uh, handing over to the capable master, Jake Bonney. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, everyone. Pilots. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, folks. I'm going to hand it over to Derek. Derek. Thank you, everyone. And we'll again be back. No, not. We'll be back for the next dive because the ROV is coming up at 8. Check, check. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, no worries. So we're still moving, so we're stopped right now, but we're still moving south to waypoint eight. Yeah. Yeah, heading south. Up heading south. Up the slope. It's going to get a little steeper here. Cool. 
All right, hello everyone. Four to Eight Watch is back. Videos on comps without side tone. There it is. I think I got a bunch of stuff to do over here. Just yelp if you need something. So, uh, I heard we're doing scoop of some nodules, potentially. Back row. Oh, that lasted yes, you. that's what we seem to be going for. Yeah, not right now, though. Okay, not right now? No. no. Just said right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I guess so. I guess nope. we can try right here. Oh, Sorry, give oh. us a sec. We're still uh, plugging in and stuff. <laughs> okay. I haven't seen Yeah, it no worries. Let yet. me know. But yeah, uh, still working if it Val over says it's too. looking good, then I guess we can definitely try it. What are we getting? sampling? The, the nodules. nodules. Oh, those are nodules? Okay, cool. She's Jake, not, well, she said yes. yeah. Hey, throwing a quick yeah. shout out to my sister Karen in St. Cloud, Florida. Love you, sis. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay. That's cool. I got to talk to my brother and sister, etc. today as a family anniversary today. So it's oh, nice so to Val's still uh, commenting even oh. when she's not on watch. That's, yeah, yeah. She signed in. That's funny. Hi, Val. <laughs> Love her. Yeah, during her watch, I would like send her questions asking, <laughs> asking her stuff that she was looking at. Okay, I heard someone a moment ago talking about uh, talking to their brother and sister, family yeah. anniversary. Who was that? Yeah, that was me. Okay. Is that Jake? No, it's Ed. It's Ed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, normal human response is sorrowful, but for us it's not really so much. But uh, my dad passed a year ago today, mm -hmm. and we're just kind of reconnecting and supporting one another, which is really nice. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Uh, all good things come to an end, and it was a wonderful, glorious end. Yeah. Do you know if your siblings are watching? Uh, I know that they are not. Although, who was asking me that? It's Tori. Tori. <laughs> I did talk to my wife today yeah. also, and she said that the woman on my watch who knows so much about rocks is amazing to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> and the person who explains all the biology is so knowledgeable. Uh, so I think uh, Kim McNichol giving a shout out there to uh, Hannah. Yeah, and Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. Oh, that's so and, sweet. And uh, I told my wife about where you were in your career progression, Hannah, and Kim was shocked. She thought you were a 20-year uh, post-doc, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Yeah. Luckily, I have great teachers like Dr. Val, Dr. Balvis, and Dr. Conrad that really have taught me so much. That's awesome. And so yeah. I really appreciate all their help. Yeah. I just tried to be, I guess, yeah, like they say, him. a sponge. I, like, yeah. That's what I heard. I was waiting on back back row, I think. Yeah, I always tell people I'm a good parrot. Yeah, so I think I we're um, I think we're going to attempt a scoop sample okay. here of the nodules. All right. All right. What kind of sample are you taking here? We're going to do a scoop sample. Roger Try and that. scoop up some nodules in the net. Uh, Ooh, I don't think I've seen the scoop before. From the they tried band. to do it earlier, but it didn't, it didn't look good. Everything was attached. Um, and ROV team, just to be clear, um, scoops go in the bio boxes, correct? Yeah, we oh. can dump, yeah, we yeah. can, um, yep. we can scoop it and dump it into the bio box. Okay. Are we not using, second. we're using this, this scoop on the porch, right? Correct? Uh, is that going, does that go straight into a bag? Yeah, and then I think oh. you dump them into, like you um, put the whole thing into the oh, okay. bio box, uh, I think. Unless we have another scoop in the... I don't know, never seen that before. That's I don't cool remember about. putting the, I've not seen that either. the scoop into... Um, I mean, I guess we can try that. Is there another scoop on board? Uh, that's a good question. I was going to ask ROV that. <laughs> I don't know what's in the sample boxes. <laughs> I was not check, there check. for before lunch. Check. Why is this alarming? Uh, make a check. Yeah, just to take a quick look. I mean, this isn't stuff that's going to jump out of the scoop. So, I mean, that is an interesting bag, though.
We do not have anything in there. there that's where you would keep the scoop? Yeah. We oh. usually like to keep our tools forward. They could be in the... Oh, no, it's probably wow. not in the starboard. We've been putting samples in the starboard, so... All right, well... I think this is the only scoop we got. This one with the net. We'll give that a shot then. So it's a one and done kind of thing? Yeah, I, we're only scooping once, I, I guess. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could try, we could try like, dumping it, but... Yeah, they, uh, that's not going to work. They used yeah. to be um, tools that were like magnetically attached to yep. the front of the porch, but... Yeah, we've done individual scoops before, but uh, not right now. Oh. We're going to combat some of the warm air in here by making it a little loud for a bit, sorry. So after we scoop, we just put it into one of the boxes. The whole thing will go okay. in the forward box, yeah. I haven't used this one before. Yeah. It doesn't seem like any of us have ever seen that before. There's a prop. <laughs> Do you want to just scrape the bottom and see if loud. these come off or if they're attached? Yeah, we can try that. Even just with the nip. I mean, we still need to see if this stuff is even loose. Yeah. Uh, check. Uh, seems like I'm scooping. Oh, oh yeah, maybe. Looks like Look at that. No yeah, that Would it looks bet way. against it? You want me to come in? <laughs> yes, we are. Oh my god. Awesome. Hannah, can you share what will we do with these nodules? Like, what can we learn from them? So, we will be sending them to our colleagues, and they will be looking at the growth patterns of the manganese crust mm -hmm. and trying to learn more interesting things about how the manganese crust forms because there's not too much that we know about what makes up, well, how this manganese crust forms over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I, I thought, I thought for sure that that was just like rock. I didn't realize that it was like yeah. stuff on the surface. That's really cool. Same. Is yeah. There a quantity we're going for? Yeah, I mean, we can do multiple scoops More, to fill right? the bag, oh, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially if it's like a one and done. And then we didn't get any from the last team out. Right. Well, we didn't know we had our nifty bag. Yeah. Well, that's good, too, because we don't get any of the sediment because it'll filter out. Yeah. No, it's super smart. Should we say rock on? Right <laughs> yeah. Hannah, did you show him the yeah, geology? Yeah, he, he says he groups. wants to make them up on the fly. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, okay. they're, they're worse that way. Sometimes, okay. sometimes they say ones that don't make sense, and that's even funnier. Kind of like dad jokes, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Tito, I think that's where your laundry bag went. <laughs> <laughs> some bigger rocks in there because I'm pushing the vehicle up but I can try can you like hold the bag closer to the, like it doesn't seem like there's anything in it it's not it's still kind of flowing around right oh well, maybe there. there's definitely some stuff in there okay yeah it's kind of it's all sediment you still can't really see there's a oh, little yeah. pile yeah, in there yeah there's some in there Anna, do you think that's good? I mean, or? I could hold the scoop and then jump up to a spot where it's not as dusty. Okay. And then get another, you know, get another scoop. Yeah. Try that. Okay. Good thing is, hopefully they won't float. <laughs> they won't float out. I don't think they'll float. Yeah. Wow. 
looks like a good spot. Yeah. Val said that it was a nice scoop. <laughs> so good job, ROV team. Tori, are you able to switch this screen? Okay. If you go to monitor right. I wonder if I, I could get a better bottom? push here. Yep. Grip and on this push. thing. Let's see if this will work. Nope, that's yours. Uh, uh -oh. That's all right. Mm. Okay, okay, we're back. Mm. I don't have control on this one. Is that your monitor left? This is, oh, maybe. Oh, I want to flip it over. It doesn't want to flip that way, though. Yeah, cool. Okay. Nice. Oh, that's There's right. a puck on the yeah. left side I know. weighing it down. It seems better Do to grab it the way you had it than a puck. That's what, that's what Dan but was it, saying. It's but. curved, so the puck oh. side is the better scoop. Oh, I see. So you're trying to grab the little ball. Yeah, that, yeah. There needs to be like a weight on the bottom of this thing. Yeah, it's actually a Can hockey you puck. Roll it over so it's leaning oh. on the slurp intake or something. You could try that. Yeah. Where is the hockey puck at? It's yeah. right underneath the manipulator yeah. right now. It's black. Regulation oh, hockey puck. I thought about drawing it, but then I didn't want to ruin <laughs> if, it, if they're looking at it. It's a quasi Williams grip. <laughs> Watch out for that camera. Derek, what's the next waypoint we're coming up to? Eight. Okay. And there's a ninth after that. Yeah. Well, we'll get. Do we know? Are we supposed to start recovering at eight, or are we supposed to be on deck at eight? Uh, it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. I think last time we rose at eight, if I recall. But I'm not sure. You know, I'll double check. Or we rose like maybe 15 minutes earlier, 20 minutes earlier. So oh. they got off from replacing. Says we should be off that. bottom. Well, yeah. It doesn't really. I'll have to oh, clarify. Yay! Oh my gosh, you're doing great. It seems like shallower uh, scoops are probably better, huh? Yeah. Pushing us around. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I can try one more time here. Yeah, one doesn't more time. seem like I'm getting much with this thing. Will y'all cut open the nodules? 
with the rock salt, or what will you do with them? I think we will, I, actually I'm not sure. Dr. Val, um, are we going to cut open the nodules on board? Hopefully she'll respond. But that's a great question. I'm not sure. That was a good scoop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would, though, like to open the nodules up, especially if they have something, sometimes you said the megalodon teeth, or... I mean, yeah. if we got a big one, it'd be a really nice cut. You'd be able to see rings. Yeah. So, so I feel like these ones might be on the smaller end, so we'll have to see. Well, maybe, well, I don't know. I don't want to, like, say and then not, but maybe right. if we opened one just so we could see the right. patterns, that'd be cool. And, and we might have, be like, one to How is this for models. amount of nodules? Perfect. Yeah, All I right. think that looks good. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and throw that either job. Lambda or Omega, your choice. Huh? Is that forward or? Yeah, forward. Forward box? Forward boxes. Okay. See they must have a new data collection sheet or something. Did you say Omega? Yeah, Omega or Lambda. Where is that? Is that on your sheet? Yep, that is on my sheet. That is what they're labeled as. That's new. Yeah, All Lambda right. is left, pop Omega is Pop out the box. Right. Uh, can you pop out the tool tray? Tool tray out. And do you want to rack, am I rack back? Uh, I was a little, not all the way. There yeah. you go, tool tray out. And I'm racking back. Yep, it's definitely Omega. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I guess the Lambda wiped uh, off. I guess forward was too confusing. <laughs> Second time now we've started washed and gone right into sampling. Oh yeah. <laughs> we move fast. Well, we kind of move slow, but we're always fast to get samples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we always like to look at everything. Good to get underway good. here. Uh, do you want to shoot for 0 0.3 again? or? 0 0.3 was a good speed, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. So we have... Um, we have one more waypoint after this one, so it'd be nice to get as close as we can to completing the transect. But I also have a we'll note here saying that we need to collect the rock like, at 1,200 yeah, meters. Zero point three is good. I'm sorry, what? I have a note here that says we need to collect the rock at 1,200 meters. Uh, bridge nav. Can you say that again? Uh, I have a note here saying that we need to collect a rock at 1,200 meters. Can we track a line, please, okay. at heading 191? at 0 0.3 knots. Correct. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if my grandma is still watching, but 
Yimi, if you're watching, hello. I'm so glad you were able to click the link that I sent you. <laughs> and I hope you just got really excited about me scooping up rocks. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. For anyone that's watching on our YouTube uh, channel, you won't be able to leave a message in the chat, but on nautiluslive.org, if you see that little green light flashing, that means that we're here and we're able to see any questions or comments that you leave. And when we have a chance, uh, we'll answer some of them that we see. So yeah, if you're here watching and you wanna give someone a shout out or tell them that you're watching, feel free to leave a comment and let us know. There's also bios for each of the watch standards yeah. below the live video window too. Yeah, so you can check out those bios and learn a little bit more about all of us, where we come from, what our goals are on the ship. Um, and Hannah, I wanted to ask you, earlier we were talking about all of your knowledge and how much you know. Can you share with us, like, how did you first get interested in geology? Was that something that started, like, in high school? Did you go into college knowing you wanted to do geology? No, I had no idea what geology was. <laughs> I Really, I had, no, I had no clue. And then I knew there was earth science, uh -huh. but... I didn't take it because I wanted to take physics instead in high school, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I didn't take it. Well, I really loved my, that's probably one of my favorite science teachers in high school was Mr. Foss, and he was my physics teacher, and he had oh. such a big passion for physics. Like, I've never met anyone as excited for physics as he was. Yeah. So it was always exciting to be in his class, and same with my other biology teacher that we're going to meet, my mm -hmm. Bio 2 teacher. Miss Koenig, yeah. she had such a big inspiration for me and uh, she really was so nice and was like pushing me, not pushing me, but like giving me the reassurance that I could be whatever type of scientist I wanted to be. Yeah, that encouragement is really important. Yeah. That's so sweet. So when I went to college, I was actually going in as a marine biology major mm. and at, at orientation when we were in when I was with the so I was just a regular bio major so uh -huh. when we went to my science of college orientation at LSU the every college like college of math college of physics biology and chemistry and geology each gave a presentation about what their department did mm -hmm. and my one goal was being able to travel and do science that was all I wanted to do and geology's pitch, I guess, the best way, the geology department's pitch really hooked me in. And right after that, I went right up to the College of Science president. And I was like, is there a way that I can switch my major right now to geology? Oh. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. Just go sit with the geology people. And it was just me and another guy. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is a really small field. <laughs> but yeah. That, I, that sounds correct. Yeah. <laughs> So, our, our geology department was like five students and three professors. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of professors and we we had a lot of grad students mm -hmm. too. So we had grad students, master's and PhD. Mm -hmm. But I always knew going into my undergrad that I wanted to do my master's no matter yeah. what. So I stayed in state and had in state tuition. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. Decided to do my master's somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm curious too to hear about like everyone else's experiences about how you kind of came to this role and if you visioned yourself being here, if you were like always interested in the ocean or science in general. Malia, what about you? Yeah, I've always had a, a great interest in the natural world. Mm -hmm. So as a child growing up on Hawaii Island, you know, it's a volcanic island. Yeah. So there was this continual um, evolution and dynamic of the destruction and creation of land. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually got a really late start. Um, and it, this is, speaks to, um, you know, our, our roles as lifelong learners. Yeah. So after um, high school, I actually began my family. So I had five children. Mm -hmm. And when I was midlife, about 36 years old, I was really concerned about the development that was going on mm -hmm. in Hawaii and the lack of Kanaka O'ivi or Native Hawaiian voices mm -hmm. at the table regarding our cultural heritage, our archaeological sites, our cultural yeah. landscapes. And so I was like, you know what? If I need to get a degree, 
in order to protect and preserve these places, then that's what I was going to do. Wow. So I went off to uh, University of Hawaii, got my degree in anthropology, my bachelor's, then got my master's in applied archaeology because I wanted to really um, kind of advocate and also yeah. empower our native communities to, to have the tools in order to protect their, their landscapes. So, you know, just a good story. Hopefully it's inspiring some people yeah. who may be like midlife, yeah. you know, to pursue what it is that you love and the, the ways that you can benefit your community. So mahalo, yeah. mahalo for asking. Yeah. I commend you for that. That is amazing. Yeah. Because, Thank oh wait, because mm -hmm. in grad school, you know, I, I've seen a variety of different ages there and it's just, it's so cool to see everybody on their own path with their education and just seeing how different like paths people take in life before they end up where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I think that's right, awesome. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for uh, sharing that, Maria. Yeah. Sure, Val you know, would you. like the band to know that she disputes 36 as being li midlife. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, did you hear that, Maria? I think you're muted. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Val was uh, sending in a comment disputing that uh, 36 is midlife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> From my point right now, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I wanted to thank you, Malia, for sharing all of that because I've heard you talk before about um, like your master's degree, especially in that story. Like, uh, I haven't known you for too long, but that does not like surprise me how hardworking you are and that you went back and you were also raising a family like that. Wow. Yeah, and that's incredible. You know, yeah. and I think it speaks to our connection to Aina, to land. Yeah. You know, and that we have a, a kuleana, a responsibility um, as the indigenous people of Hawaii to, to protect that which feeds us. If you look at the word Aina, Ai means to eat or to, to feed. And so the Aina feeds us, literally. You know, we get our, our food from the ocean and from the land. And so we have this reciprocal relationship with the land to make sure that that which takes care of us that we take care of that yeah and so you know it's in this proverb um lelo no e he ali ka aina he kawa ke kanaka the land is a chief the humans are the servants mm. so when you look at the world that way you have a deeper understanding of your role mm -hmm. in the environment and the ways that we can take care of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for that. That's that was beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. So good to hear. And I uh, teach earth and environmental science, and I've learned just so much from Sorry you Sorry to about cut you off real quick. Do you mind if we zoom yeah. in on that sponge? Both of these actually the one in front and one over there. The one in front of the lasers? One yeah. One okay. in front of the lasers and the one on the left for them, please. Go for zoom on this one, Ed. Go on in. Uh, ooh. ooh. All right, let's see. That? I do not think this is one of the guys we need to collect. All right, come on. Come on wide. Hop over to this one. Pull for wide. Thank you. <laughs> Good direction. Thank you. I, this is fun. Sealed at the top. All right, you can go for zoom. Going in. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, maybe not What's sealed. In there? Tubular. Is there a shrimp in there? No. And a mushroom next to it. Right there? Yeah, maybe. I think those are little hydroids operating inside. Must uh, be some type of like this here. Yeah, on the inside, yeah. Huh. Right Must be some kind of parasitic one, thing. Two, oh, yeah. Oh, I thought that was just part of the sponge, but I guess. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. 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 Baby coral? Baby coral? Um, baby on coral? the right? On the left of me? No, right up yeah. here. Yeah. Oh. 
that, I would, I believe that would be coral, most likely. Okay. Do you guys want to stay here for any reason to move on? Um, I think we're good to move on. We can move good. on. Sponge Association. <laughs> I think she needs an LLC after that. <laughs> um, they're incorporated. Thank Sponge you very Associ much. Sponge Association LLC. Amalgamated. Uh, Asako says the uh, left red one is an Anthomastis, which is the mushroom coral. Yes. Okay. Sponge Anemone Association. Sponge and Enemy Alliance. <laughs> Wasn't anemone the, the word that was like difficult to pronounce? Yeah, I'm an anemone. I'm an anemone. Sponge and Enemy <laughs> Association. No. Phenomena. <laughs> Fighting for sponge and anemone rights. <laughs> wow. That should be a Sea cucumber, I believe. Ooh. A and random big rock. Random big rock. Yeah, large pillow basalt boulder size. And then that might be lobate flow, but right below it. It might be what? Lobate flow. Oh, Lo oh yeah, yeah, lobate flow. So I'd love to hear every the other uh, watch people. What's your oh, story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, who did we accidentally cut off? You can continue. Okay. I'll, I'll continue. I was going to say I, um, I'm a high school science teacher, and I currently teach earth and environmental science. And so, like, everything that you've been just sharing with me, Malia, about your connection uh, with our planet and where you live and that land has inspired me so much to go back with, like, new ideas for lessons for my students. Um, but I'll say that I have always been really interested in the ocean from like being a very, very young child. I like loved sharks. Right now I know our viewers can't see, but I'm wearing some shark earrings, some hammerheads. Wait, um, I wanna see. You wanna see? Oh my gosh, y'all, they are <laughs> so cute. Okay, you have to take a photo and put that on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I will. I know Mike and I were talking about some of our favorite shark movies, but I just would watch like so many shark movies. Um, and that was kind of like one of the things um, that I would do with my papa. Aww. And yeah, I just loved sharks. And I would read a lot of shark books. And then I think that for a long time, I thought the only way that I could like come out and explore the ocean was by being like a marine biologist. And then I kind of found some other passions. I, you know, felt very passionate about education. And I found out like I loved chemistry when I was in high school. So I got a chemistry degree. Um, with a concentration in secondary ed so I could teach high school. Um, and then I found my way to the ocean and I'm yeah. loving this uh, role that I have here because it's kind of combining like everything that I love and I'm super passionate about. Um, but one of the things I love the most about being out here is just learning about everyone else's journey to being on Nautilus because it, it's so unique. Everyone has like a completely different path. and. For any of our viewers that are wondering like how you can get out here and how you can explore the ocean, like my eyes have been like so open to like everything that you could do. Like there's a role for everybody on this ship. So Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't have to go to college in order to be an explorer. Yeah. You know, there's so many multiple different ways to to get out here on the on the ocean. Yeah. Mike, do you wanna share? Did you always like yeah. imagine yourself working with the ocean specifically? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I um, was introduced to uh, Dr. Ballard's work when I was eight, I think. And mm -hmm. um, when we went to a, a, a tour of Woods Hole, I grew up in New England. And, uh, you know, from then on, I kind of, you know, wanted to do shipwreck work and, yeah. uh, and underwater work. and. Uh, I was one of Ballard's uh, Jason Argonauts in high school uh, when that oh. program was around. Well, Whoa. it's still around, but in a different form. That's a cool name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and Atalanta was one of the Argonauts.